welcome back. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? We're in the last uh, of our series of programs on the science of leadership. As a leader, you can only be a leader if the followers want to follow. And as a leader, your job is to get uh, the work unit goals, the organization goals met through the efforts of other people. Uh, to do that, your job is to set a vision uh, that's attractive enough to motivate people to join you on that journey and then stay on the journey with them to help them out along the way. There are a number of ways of doing that and one of them is to take care of the kinds of uh, things that get in the way of performance. We've talked about that kind of thing a little bit in terms of the five things, the six things you should be doing every day. Here's a double check on those as we wind up our series on the science of leadership. Remembering that this science comes from research, it comes from expert opinion from people long in the field and 2020 hindsight of pros like yourself as you work through your career. If you want to be at the top and stay there and be successful, here are some things you can do that will take care of or manage 85% of performance problems in organizations. Now, you can do them with the people you work with uh, and you can encourage them to do these things and focus on these things with the people they work with and they can do those things, these things with the people they work with and if everyone joins you on this in a top-down kind of a system, 85% of the performance problems that organizations face in producing goods and services are going to be looked after. So here they go. Number one, ensure that uh, people's understanding of the task that you're giving them is the same as yours. Um, do they know what uh, is required, how long they should be taking to do it, when you want it done? Do they have a clear picture of what the end result is going to look like? Number two, does the person that you're talking to understand why performance is important? Um, important to them, why is it important to the organization, important to the other people that they work with? Number three, do the people that you're giving jobs to and working with understand the consequences of non-performance in terms of what the personal impact is going to be on them if this job goes south or even if the job goes sideways? Can the employee do the task? Number four, do we know when we're giving jobs out to other people that they really have the physical strength to do something, the uh, physical dexterity, uh, the mental strength, and the kind of mental strength? You know, we used to think of intelligence as being just one thing. Now we understand that there are things called multiple intelligences, and uh, somebody can be very, very bright, but their interpersonal intelligence, their social intelligence ain't all that great, and so having them serve in a capacity capacity to influence other people or to get them into a workable team may not be the best delegation decision. So make sure that you ask yourself when you're doing your delegation, does this employee have the wherewithal to in fact do the task? Do the staff that we give things to, the people that, that you give things to, do they end up getting regular feedback uh, performance? Um, do they know that they get uh, positive feedback when that's uh, merited? Uh, do you give corrective feedback in order to keep them on the road between the white line and the yellow line and avoid going into the ditch with an accident and the organization in the ditch with them and yourself included? What's important is that we sometimes uh, hear this old uh, business about, well, if you, you want to give a job to somebody, give it to a hard worker, give it to a, a good person, give it to a busy person. So have you ever thought about there are consequences, negative consequences for good work? If the people that do the best work get more and more and more work, and while they're doing more and more and more work, they're noticing other people going by on the way to coffee or lunch breaks or leaving earlier than they are, then perhaps they begin to lose their motivation, their move to action, because the results of being a good worker are punishing for them versus non-punishing. Is it possible that uh, uh, we forget on occasion that employees uh, need resources? Uh, when we're assigning a job, it's important always to uh, ask for the kind of support they need in terms of facilities, equipment, materials, uh, advice, guidance, that kind of thing. And finally, it's important to know that employees' work needs are being met. If you want to move people to action, to motivate them, they need a couple of things. Number one, we know the motivation literature is very clear. People need to know they're making progress, so they need to know that they're achieving versus uh, doing all this work for nothing. And number two, they need to know that they're recognized. 
So make sure you give people feedback that indicates, yeah, things are growing, if indeed they are. And number two, make sure you spend the time making them look great. It'll pay you back in spades as an aspiring or an actual leader. You've got some good people behind you then. They'll stick with you on those cloudy and rainy and stormy days, not just uh, the sunny days. Remember, your job as a leader at times with new and inexperienced and uncomfortable people is to lead from in front. When you do your leading from in front, you're directing, controlling, that kind of thing. At other times when people have a little more ability and a little more comfort doing the particular job in question, you can lead from beside your side. You're going to collaborate, you're going to cooperate, you're going to be doing things in a, in, a, in a different kind of a team form and culture. And finally, if you've got some people that do in particular this particular job that you're giving them, really know what to do and they're comfortable and confident in doing that, you can lead from behind. And that means you just make sure they have the right resources and you have a reporting system so you can see how things are going. That's about it for now. My name is John Moffat. The series has been The Science of Leadership and I hope you've picked up one, two or three new tidbits for your toolbox. Share them with others and you'll all end up as winners. Please uh, keep in mind that there's another show coming on, a series called The Art of Leadership, and that's where we deal with more of the human element, uh, the artfulness of persuasion and, uh, and uh, keeping relationships positive in the workplace. It's as important as what you've learned in the last eight programs. Thank you for joining me. Hope to see you on Leadership TV again in the near future. Goodbye for now.